All righty, all righty, all righty. So uh, going live didn't work today, but we're going to just shut that down and it doesn't really matter. We're going to be going live every single, actually three times a week. And then from there, someone, obviously Morgan, she's going to be watching this and, and writing something up on BPI.live. We're putting out content not only on Instagram, on two other accounts, which is news and celebrities, but we also obviously have BPI.live. So if you guys are interested in any of that, definitely just let us know on what you want to see, what you don't want to see, what you want to discuss. A lot of people have been messaging us, and that's essentially what's bringing up a couple of these uh, topics, especially today, which is three ways that agents differ. And obviously, there's a multitude of ways, okay? Number one, do they show up on time? Do they dress professionally? Do they use foul language? What's their, what's their rate? on what they charge or how often are they actually selling things in the building. There's a multitude of things. I'm gonna go specifically to things that actually they garner more sales and or are great in negotiating and especially influencing someone to actually buy or not buy, okay? That necessary nudge, as Brian Buffini talks about it, that necessary nudge of someone's on the borderline, whether I should buy, should I not buy? And then you give that necessary nudge, something that most buyers actually need because they don't actually wanna make the decision. They wanna buy, but they don't actually wanna be sold. But if someone actually can influence someone on, this is actually what you should be uh, paying attention to, then those three things that I'm about to be talking about is what you should be looking out for. So number one is sales in general, okay? Obviously a lot of people, it's a dirty word and nobody wants to talk about it, but sales is critical. Nothing in this world can actually move without sales. Yes, there's marketing, but there's also a sales component because if you're really good at marketing, but you don't know how to sell, in other words, they're at the Apple store or they're, they're on your landing page or you're calling them and saying, hey, listen, you should refer us business. You have to be able to sell your idea, your product, your service, your company, your, if you're looking to raise money, whatever the case is, you actually have to sell something to people. Marketing will bring them in front of you. You have to convince them to work with you, okay? There's a multitude of ways of doing that. Number one is what I wrote down is their energy. What is their energy level? And they've talked about it before is that, you know, obviously Jay-Z has the line, he's like, I'm a business man. In other words, he's a, he's a business, comma, man, all right? He's not a businessman, he's a businessman. And the reason I say that is because if you don't understand that athletes are now businessmen and businessmen have to be athletes. In other words, businessmen, businesswomen, doesn't really matter about the gender, but what I'm saying is that if you don't have the energy to actually sell, to influence, to wake up, go to the gym, if you don't have that covered, if you, don't, if you, if you are not able to do that, you're not able to convince someone, low energy is one of the worst ways to actually uh, have a home sit on the market. They're lazy showing up. They don't know, they don't have the enthusiasm. They're not excited about the product. They're not excited about the building, the home, the neighborhood. And the buyer feels that. The buyer, you transfer emotion through the way that you actually sell. They emotionally buy and then they justify it logically. Well, it's in the right area, it's close to work, it's near the gym I like, it's in my price range, blah, blah, blah. Those are logical things. But emotionally, they have to walk in and be like, I love this and you give them that emotion. Number one is sales with the energy, optimism. You have to be optimistic. I'm still on number one. Optimistic when it comes to the marketplace, selling the home. Optimistic that an offer comes in, you're gonna be able to close the deal. When you're in contract and things start hitting the fan, you have to be optimistic that you're gonna be able to get to the closing table. You're at the closing table and something happens, you have to be optimistic that it's actually gonna close. There's a, it, really what it comes down to is solution oriented. You're optimistic, but you're solution oriented. Here's the problem recognize how it is, don't dwell on the problem, look for the solution. Number one is sales. Number two is how do you treat other people, okay? This is something that, because this is how they're gonna be treating people when they see your home, how they're gonna be treating the doorman. I wrote a, a bunch of people, a bunch of things down here. How are they gonna be, how do they treat other people? I highly recommend, There's it's a little un, unorthodox, take the listing agent or the person that you're interviewing to represent your home and walk around the neighborhood. Have a walking interview, as they say. Walking interview, how do they treat the doorman, the people down the street, people that are walking their dogs, people that are walking their kids. How do they treat people? Because that's how they're gonna treat the management company, the attorneys, the listing agent, the buyers. It's just a, a, a preview of exactly how they're gonna be treating people when they see your home, okay? If they're treating people and they're like, eh, a little standoffish, that goes into the sales. That goes into how they treat people because if they don't treat the management company correctly, the management company is gonna tell the board, the board's gonna come back to the management company and they could ask for more things, they could even reject you. It's all about treating people correctly.
Okay, I'm not talking about getting run over, and I'm not talking about being just a, a, a doormat. I'm talking about treating them correctly. All right, and the third thing is analytical and objective. Okay, analytical in the fact that they have to recognize the current marketplace. They have to recognize the, the reality of comparables. They have, to, they have to recognize to be able to objectively remove themselves from the deal from 35,000 feet and say, okay, why are they coming in and saying this? Why, why is the feedback, you know, it could, the buyer's feedback or, or agent feedback can be, can be completely different than what you thought of the home. You could walk in and say, this is completely renovated, this is beautiful, it's turnkey. A buyer will walk in and be like, I'm gonna take this all out. Why, why do you feel that? You know, well, I'm expecting this, 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 and this appliances, and your, your appliances aren't as nice as mine, okay? So you have to objectively say, oh, okay, maybe my opinion is not the top opinion. And that's easy to say. It's easy to just you know, say you know, theoretically, but when it comes down to it, you're obs you as the homeowner are, are subjectively selling your home because you owned it, you went through the buying process, you raised your kids in there, or that's where your home office was, or, or that's your, your biggest asset, which it is for most people, you're subjectively looking at it like, no, that is the best bathroom to, to renovate, or this is the best area to actually live in, or this is the best building. But as an agent, you have to say, oh, maybe it's not. You have to objectively look at the entire situation because it's, it also goes back into the, the, the second one, which is, if you objectively look at a situation, you can objectively say, this is why they're, they're coming in at this price. This is why they're actually saying this feedback. This is why, you have to look at it and say, maybe that other home that the agent, the buyer's agent can use as a comparable to bring our price down, they are coming in like that. So you have to objectively look at it and say, where are they coming from? And then solution oriented, this is where we're coming from. Let's come in, come to a meeting of minds. So number one is sales. With sales, it comes with energy, optimism, enthusiasm. They have to be. They have to. They have to exude that. You have to feel that. That's all more about a feeling. Treat others. How are they treating others? How are they treating the doorman, the management company, the attorneys, the listing agent? That's all wrapped in one because that's something that you're not around. That's not something that you can control. They are essentially what you're hiring them to be. A broker. They are brokering the deal. They are they are your mouthpiece. So if they are not treating people correctly, that's exactly what sales is not. That is exactly what getting the deal is not. That's exactly what being solution solution oriented is not. And then the third thing, obviously, objectively and analytically. So the first two are more about feelings. This, the last one is okay. Objectively, what's the marketplace? What are they talking about when they when they say comparables of other classic sexes or other studios or other one bedrooms or condos in the area or the amount of inventory levels, the amount of down arrows on purchase prices, especially now, is that people aren't really emotionally buying. They are analytically buying. They're saying this is a good deal and this is why. Before it said this is a good deal because I feel like it's a good deal. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if you guys have any questions, obviously leave in the comments below. And, if, and beyond this, go to our content page, which is bpi.live, follow us on Instagram. And if you guys have any questions that you want us to bring up, we're only gonna do three videos a week with longer form content, longer form video, written video, written word, as opposed to four videos, okay? So they're gonna be better instead of quantity, okay? So for us, we're getting 1% better. Again, it's a totally different marketplace than what it was. We're actually seeing inventory levels come down, shrink, but I'm gonna be able to give that on the next market update. So subscribe to the video, leave your comments below. Have an amazing weekend. And as always, charles at botanston.com is my personal email. Talk to you guys soon.